The fourth standard in competency three states that the teacher understands differences in students' development of word identification skills and reading fluency and knows instructional practices for meeting students' individual needs in those areas for students in grades four through six. Let's cover these topics now. We will begin with the role of fluency in reading development. In our previous discussion, we explored the foundational importance of fluency in reading development. The spotlight in this chapter will be on fluency instruction and assessment, targeting grades four through six. Instructional strategies to enhance fluency, which as you can recall is comprised of accuracy rate and prosody, is pivotal for meaningful comprehension. Here are key strategies you'll want to remember. First strategy is called monitored oral reading, and it has a three-step process. That includes, number one, the teacher models to the child how to read fluently and effectively. Step two, the student practices. Here we want to encourage students to reread aloud the same text that we just read to them. And then step number three, the teacher provides feedback to the student as tailored guidance, such as modeling accurate reading or noting pronunciation marks and anything that might help the development of the reader improve their reading development. The second instructional strategy is called repeated reading. This method teaches fluency through repeated engagement. First, the student reads alone and then the teacher encourages the student to reread texts on their own once they finish. Second, we have timed reading, which helps set attainable rate criteria for reading. The third variation is called media assisted reading, where the student can utilize digital resources and recordings to listen to the book as they follow along with the actual book. And the fourth variation is called paired reading, which is collaborative reading with a partner. Moving on, let's not forget that this standard that we are focusing on for your exam has the phrase, the teacher understands differences in students' development of word identification skills. So let's cover this part now. Given that all students come into the classroom with a different set of needs, background, knowledge, and skill sets, the question becomes when and how to introduce fluency instruction to the class. For your exam, remember that fluency instruction must be holistic, addressing single syllable words and multisyllabic words and connected text. The degree of instruction should be tailored to individual needs based on assessment. Now, in order to meet the needs of all of our learners in the classroom, we want and need a plan. We need a strategy. Here we go. How to build students' reading accuracy. To do this, make sure to focus on automatic word identification through explicit instruction in phonemic awareness, phonics, and sight words. In order to help build and strengthen our students' reading rate, strategies you will need to be aware of for your exam include whisper reading, and accountability in independent silent reading. Our final strategy that will help build students' prosody, which you can recall that prosody is the way we read out loud. So it's called our intonation. Now to help our students with this, we use what's called phrase cued reading in order to help them with appropriate expression. In case you aren't familiar with phrase cued reading, this reading strategy encourages readers to move beyond word by word reading to recognize and appropriately read phrases within sentences. In this method, a teacher selects and marks a text using slash marks to indicate natural pauses and phrase boundaries in a sentence. For example, the Texas Rangers slash helpless most of the night slash scored four runs in the bottom of the ninth inning last night and then double slash notice here how one slash counts for a comma two slashes count for a period the teacher explains the markings and reads the text aloud modeling the proper 
reading of the phrases. The teacher and the students may then reread the text aloud together following the marked phrases. Students may further practice with partners alternating between reading aloud together and taking turns. The goal is to help students develop fluency by reading phrases with appropriate expression rather than by reading word by word. Turning back to our standard that this lesson is based on, so far you've learned the differences in students' development of word identification and reading fluency. You've learned the instructional practices all about reading fluency, and now it's time to cover the area of meeting the needs for all of our individual students' needs. For your exam, you will really want to be ready to answer questions about meeting the needs for struggling readers, English language learners, and advanced learners. For our struggling readers, make sure to use texts at the independent reading level, focus on sight words, and also provide additional practice. For our English learners, use modeling, phrase cued reading, and echo reading, which is when the teacher reads a word, a phrase, a sentence, or a page, and then the student rereads that same thing. This helps teach tonal patterns and correct pronunciation. Then for our advanced learners, challenge their reading level with increased complexity and building on to current skills. The landscape of fluency development is multifaceted and intricate. By employing these strategies outlined in this lesson, you can craft personalized pathways to fluency for every reader in your classroom. Need to pass your Texas Core Subjects exam? Click the link in the description below to get prepared faster, smarter, Sounds right. better, with everything you need all in one place. So you ace your exam and become a certified teacher with teacherpreps.com.